good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast changes in the constitution of the Republic of Western Armenia, Sons of Western Armenia, Sanvela Narek Hazarian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, Armenian permanent representative to the UN, Armenian heritage in Artsakh on the verge of total destruction. The prevention of ethnic cleansing and genocide is responsibility of all members of the international community. Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Artsakh, U.S. Congress to hold hearings on safeguarding people of Artsakh, event on the occasion of the 85th anniversary of the Komitas Music School in Stepanakert was held. On June 10, 2023, the ninth plenary session of the Second Convocation of the National Assembly of Republic of Western Armenia was held. In addition to the current issues, the session also discussed a project proposed by the Government of Western Armenia, which suggests an amendment to Article 71 of Chapter 5 of the Constitution of Western Armenia. According to the proposed draft, the schedule for the registration and campaigning of candidates for presidential elections will be determined. The amendment to the Constitution has been sent to the President of Western Armenia, Armenak Abrahamian, for approval. A specialized Turkish translation of the National Constitution of the Republic of Western Armenia has been published by the Constitutional Council of the Republic of Western Armenia. From the very first days of the tragic war that started on September 27, 2020, brothers Samvel and Narek experienced the cruelty of war. Although they had different personalities, they shared the same fate, fighting and sacrificing their lives to save Artsakh. Samvel Ghazarian was posthumously awarded the title of Hero of Artsakh and received the Order of the Golden Eagle. Narek Ghazarian was awarded the Order of the Battle Cross, Second Degree and the Medal for Military Merit. Samvel Ghazarian was born on December 23, in Ejmiatin, while Narek Ghazarian was born on February 13, 2002. They were the only children of Geram and Nushik, their parents. Both Samvel and Narek attended Vagashapat No. 10 school, named after Moses Horenati. Samvel started attending this school at the age of six, and Narek joined a year later at the age of seven. The Ghazarian brothers were full of life, cheerful and driven. They had already planned their future and set many goals. Narek aspired to become a renowned chef and dreamed of going to Spain. He initially enrolled in an Armenian French college but couldn't manage both school and college, so he decided to continue his studies after completing his military service. Samvel, on the other hand, had a passion for music and played the drums. He saw his future connected to music. However, before pursuing their big dreams, they felt the obligation to fulfill their duty to their motherland. Samvel went to serve in Artsakh first, and Narek joined about a year later. According to their mother, when the brothers reunited in Hadrut, Samvel became furious and demanded that the commanders not send Narek to the front line so that two brothers wouldn't be together. If this is the case, he should be punished, but his parents should be punished. Everyone has heard my son's words. They even say that Samvel took out a weapon. They promised him that his brother wouldn't be sent, but not only did they break their promise, they sent Narek back into the perilous battlefields, knowingly risking his life, says the boy's mother. Narek was injured and passed away 12 hours later. Meanwhile, while Samvel was on a special mission, even he was killed by an anti-aircraft missile on October 12, just 10 hours after his brother's death. Samvel's body couldn't be located by his parents for a long time. The father personally built the graves of his sons, and in the Zvartnos district of Ejmiatim, where they spent their childhood, Geram Ghazarian erected a monument to honor the memory of the heroic brothers. In the past, jewelry for Armenia served as a talisman and aura purification. In ancient Armenia, every Armenian wore jewelry appropriate to his or her age. The opinion that an unmarried girl in ancient Armenia had no right to wear jewelry is not shared by many ethnographers. In some regions, one of which is Javakh, an unmarried girl of 12 to 13 years old was adorned from head to toe with jewelry. Today, according to ethnographer Maya Sahakyan, most wearers of Armenian jewelry do not know their meaning. Today, everything has become abstract. Little attention is paid to the idea. Today, few people know that every pattern, image, type of ornament in the traditional culture, in addition to aesthetic value, has a number of important symbolic functions. Ornament as an element of traditional culture express the worldview of its bearer, social and family gender status. This or that situation also had a magical meaning. An unmarried girl could not wear a silver, gold belt, a gold ring on her right hand. In ancient times, jewelry 
jewelry was also worn by men, as in addition to its aesthetic role, jewelry had protective symbols. Of the once rich masculine attire of beads, headdresses, bracelets, rings and belts, only the latter two were used in traditional households. At the same time, the silver belt was regarded as a symbol of masculinity and the gold one as an indicator of wealth. Women who wore leg and arm bracelets, snake-shaped rings, semi-oval, triangular, almond-shaped manacles and earrings, on the other hand, contributed to avoid harm, to become more attractive and beautiful. Armenia's permanent representative to the UN, Meher Markayan, spoke at the plenary session of the UN General Assembly under the agenda item Culture of Peace. Ambassador Markayan addressed the dangers of the intolerance and the incitement of hatred during his speech. As informed by the Armenian permanent mission to the UN, he welcomed the UN strategy and action plan against hate speech and urged the UN Office for the Prevention and Defense of Genocides to explicitly recognize the increasing instance of hate speech as a threat to atrocity crimes. Markarian emphasized the significant role of the United Nations educational, scientific and cultural organizations in promoting a culture of peace and safeguarding cultural heritage. The permanent representative of Armenia expressed concern that Armenian Christian monuments in Artsakh are on brink of complete destruction, and he also mentioned the destruction of Armenian heritage in Nakhijewan by Baku. Ambassador Markarian highlighted that Armenia has consistently requested the UNESCO fact-finding mission to Artsakh and the surrounding areas to aid in preserving the origins, extensive and distinctive cultural heritage. However, the efforts of international organizations to independently and impartially assess the situation on the ground are consistently obstructed by the authorities in Baku. The Artsakh Foreign Ministry issued a statement in the connection with the complete closure of the Berzo Road from which we present excerpts. On June 15, the Azerbaijani site, having deliberately resorted to a provocation on the Hakari Bridge, completely blockade all humanitarian passenger and flight traffic on the Berzo Road in the both direction. As a result of Baku's actions, the planned medical evacuation of medical workers from Artsakh to Armenia was disrupted and the urgent humanitarian transport of passengers on the Stepanaget Goris, Stepanaget Route mediated by the Russian. Peacekeeping contingent was cancelled. Also, trucks of Russian peacekeepers that were going to Goris to deliver humanitarian goods to Artsakh were stopped. In fact, the illegally established checkpoint on the road to Berzor is used by Baku authorities exclusively as a tool to continue the policy of ethnic cleansing against the people of Artsakh. It's obvious that the Baku authorities continuing the policy of ethnic cleansing of Artsakh and exclusion of the people from their native land have decided to carry out new provocations aimed at tightening the blockade and isolation of the people of Artsakh from the outside world. In order to avoid new atrocities and crimes against the Artsakh people, such illegal and aggressive steps by Baku should be given an adequate political assessment by the international community and, first of all, by all sides involved in the process. We reiterate that the prevention of mass human rights violations, including ethnic cleansing and genocide, is the responsibility of all members of the international community. On June 21, the Tom Lantus Commission on Human Rights of the U.S. Congress will hold hearings on the issue of ensuring the security of the people of Artsakh, as reported by our members sitting the commission. The commission highlights that the threat of renewed violence in the around Artsakh has escalated. The report stated that the blockade of Berzor Corridor has been ongoing for seven months and Baku has established a military checkpoint which contradicts the provisions of the ceasefire agreement of 2020. There are several international efforts aimed at reducing the risk of a new New full-scale war, including those by representatives of the U.S. State Department. The fundamental question is what measures are necessary to adequately protect the rights and security of ethnic Armenians in Artsakh, where Baku seeks to establish control, the statement concluded. On the eve, an event was held at the Stepanaget Palace of Culture and Yes to celebrate the 85th anniversary of the founding of the Komitas Musical School in the capital. During an interview with a reporter from Artsakh Press, the director of the music school, Zarine Babayan, mentioned that the school was founded in 1938. Over the course of more than 80 years, the music school being the only one in Stepanaget has trained and educated generations of students who now contribute to the cultural life of Artsakh. In the academic year 2022-2023, to 2023, this school had 
437 students. This year we have 61 graduates and nine of them have decided to continue their studies in the field of music. Even during the six months blockade, this school did not cease its activities for a single day. Our mission has remained unchanged since its establishment. We continue to cultivate a love for culture and music in our children. We are confident that our students will become valuable citizens of our country, said Babayan. Noral Makarchian, the Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports of the Republic of Artsakh, congratulated the music school on its 85th anniversary and emphasized its role in shaping the musical life of Artsakh. The event dedicated to 85th anniversary of the Komitas School of Music serves as an excellent opportunity to appreciate, reevaluate, and express heartfelt gratitude to all the dedicated individuals who have contributed the most to the cultural life of Artsakh since this school's establishment. Despite facing numerous challenges, this school has persevered with optimism and diligence imparting a love for music to our children with care and patience. Furthermore, with professionalism, it has elevated high-quality music to new heights, reflecting our national spirit and the emotions of our people, Minister Mukherjee stated. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Mm -hmm. 